Hey guys, come make a knitting machine chicken with me. So I've recently seen these chickens in a bunch of my knitting machine groups and I was dying to make one and I am so obsessed. So here's how I make mine. Here's some supplies you're gonna need. I used my 22 pin Centro knitting machine along with some little scissors, uh, my favorite crochet hook with a little, what is it, the really awesome handle that's really comfortable. Um, but any crochet hook you think that you can use is fine. I use a handful of different darning needles. I like to have a few on hand. Uh, one of them to cast off, which I'll show you how to do, and one to sew on a button. Um, especially this one you're going to need the, at least this small one to put a button on um and i got some of this fabric fusion glue to tidy in the ends and of course a button i'm using safety eyes you don't have to but if you don't like them don't use them okay we're going to turn our centro so it gets to the black pin that is the first uh knitting pin whatever you call it and we're going to cast on so you're going to go in front and behind each pin until you get all the way to the other end of the circle. And once you get back to the black pin, you're going to put your yarn through the feeder and you start turning. My Centro 22 really, really likes no tension, so I'm not using any tension here. But we're just going to keep turning until we get to about 50 rows. Depending on how big you want your chicken, I like 50 rows, so that's how far I'm going. All right, we've made it to 50 rows. So now you're gonna take your yarn out, working yarn out of the feeder, and you're gonna bring it to the pin right before the black pin. And you're going to wrap the working yarn around the machine to give you a bit of a tail so that way you have enough yarn to cast off of the machine. So now that you have your tail, you're gonna pick up the yarn and hold it in the middle on the top and you're gonna spin your machine, turn the handle just until you get to the pin right after where the your working yarn is coming out of so basically yes you don't want to go past the black pin you want the black pin to be the first stitch you pick up if you go any further it's going to come off the machine so then i'm going to take the black darning needle the one that comes with the machine for some reason this one just is the easiest one to use to pick up all of those stitches but i like to pick up the first two stitches I put my finger on that third one just so it doesn't pop off as I'm trying to tighten it and pick up the first five stitches. So from here, I turn it just a little bit so that way that empty space of all those stitches that I've already picked up is in that first part where the yarn feeder is. And that way I can just smoothly pick up the rest of the stitches without having to keep turning the machine. I mean here right here you're gonna see me make a mistake I didn't hold the stitch very well when I was picking up my stitches but that's okay I just got my little crochet hook picked up that loop real quick before I pulled too much and put it right on my needle and I kept going So 
So sometimes it happens like this where the last one or maybe there's, yeah, that last one's usually kind of tucked into the pin. So you just kind of have to move the needle so you can free that last one and pick it up. Okay, we got them all. So now we can pull that needle through, take our project out of the machine and show you what we got. All right, so here's our tube of 50 stitches or 50 rows. And so now we're gonna take the darning needle off and we're going to basically cinch both sides closed like if we were going to make a beanie, if you've made a beanie before, um, you just, um, because you picked up the stitches and cast it off and then the start, the way you started, you could just pull each end closed and it makes a little circle, closes them shut. So it looks, it'll look like a little beanie. Okay, so now that we have both sides cinched together and it's all nice and neat, we're going to tie it shut. Um, I'm gonna put probably about two or three little knots and we just wanna make sure it's all nice and smooth. We're going to go ahead and cut off that extra yarn after we're done tying it and we're going to use these these scraps later on to add a button to the bottom of the chicken and i'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit and like i said here we are we have like a little beanie so i'm just kind of stretching it out smoothing it out and checking out where my dropped stitches are so that way i can kind of work around it sometimes if there's more drop stitches on one side than the other i'll tuck that string in on the side that we're going to be stuffing and i'll leave the skip stitches on the inside but this time we're going to actually work with the skip stitch um, but here we are just kind of smoothing it out getting ready to stuff the uh, little beanie or the little chicken Okay, let's fluff our fluff and stuff the chicken. I get my fluff from uh, old like pillows that I get from Walmart. It seems to be the most cost effective. Walmart has pillows for like three bucks and sometimes that fluff is just super pricey. So I just get the fluff from the inside of a pillow. I buy a pillow and I use it for that and I uh, take it apart a little bit, make it you know, extra fluffy. And I just put like a handful in there, you know, just however firmness you want your chicken, you just go ahead and stuff it to whatever you like. Okay, so we're gonna put on the eyes, but remember when I said we're gonna work with our skipped stitches? You see that one? Uh, I know it's so triggering so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the eyes on and we're gonna use that skip stitch as our nose with our yellow yarn so I'm putting the safety eyes probably about four stitches down from the top of the chicken um, there's a bit of back and forth in some of the knitting machine groups, whether to use safety eyes, whether to not use safety eyes. Um, you know, these stuffed animals are not for children. They have small parts and they're really for decoration purposes only. So don't give these to kids if you're gonna put the safety eyes. If you're really concerned, you can use little felt eyes or you can do a little bit of like yarn and make a little, you know, stitch it up 
like you would with the nose or the beak. You can make that for the eyes, but this is what I'm doing, like I said. If you don't want to use safety eyes, don't use safety eyes. So here we're going to add the little beak. Like I said, if you wanted to do the eyes like you're doing the beak, then you can do that. But I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow yarn from like my scraps. Any yellow, orange, or whatever color you want the beak to be works. And I'm going to use that drop stitch that's perfect in the perfect spot to place my beak. And I'm just going to go through one little row of stitches and just go back and forth about four times. Okay, so now that we've stitched it about four times around, uh, we're going to tie it up a couple of times and then we're just going to tuck that knot on the inside. So now we have the eyes on and the beak is stitched on. I kind of feel it out here a little bit to see if I have enough stuffing in there. Because um, we're going to stitch that top, we're going to crochet that top part of it closed. So at this point, this is where I would add a little more stuffing and before I start crocheting it shut. to start stitching it closed on the side where the face of the chicken is per specifically the where the beak starts I make a loop to start From here I like to go just to the side of the beak and then the one after the beak. So you can see I go through, I skip that middle stitch and I pick up two of the loops or two of the rows of the knit of the knitted yarn and I put the loop on my hook and I pull it through and then I just do a single chain to start it and then I single crochet in that same space that I started in just so it's fluid. I just feel like it looks a little neater that way. Uh, so from here we're just going to single crochet two-thirds of the way across and while we're doing that single crochet we're also going to tuck in that tail so that way we don't have to tuck it in later. Come on, let's just save ourselves a little step. Thank you. 
So I used scrap yarn here, so I had to tie up some extra yarn. You could use yarn from whatever ball of yarn that you're using, I use scrap yarn, or like, you know, when you wrap the yarn around to make that extra long tail, you can make your tail extra long and use that yarn to crochet it. However you do it is completely fine, as long as you have enough yarn, working yarn, to crochet it shut. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to be doing differently is I'm going to be doing half double crochets in each of the space, each of the stitches moving forward to the end of the tail. Um, but I'm going to do a couple like half double crochets and then I'll do like the last four. I'll do half double crochet increases on the last four stitches just to kind of push that tail out to make it look a little more distinguished, if you will. Now those increases don't have to be exact, like the last four, the last five. It's really your decision. You're the one making this chicken and you know, if your chicken wants to have a really big tail feather, let it have a really big tail feather. It's totally your call. Once you've made one or two, you'll kind of get the idea. But I really like this way of closing for the tail. Again, this is easy breezy, so there's no written pattern for this or anything. Um, it's totally up to you. Alright, we've made it to the last half double crochet. We're going to chain one and then we're going to cut our yarn, working yarn and pull the rest of that yarn through. And right here you're going to see how them little half double crochets make the tail stick out just a little bit. So perfect. So now I'm just going to tuck that little bit of working yarn inside the chicken and you guys, we're almost done. So after I pull the little bit of tail in, I'm going to stick my crochet hook inside the chicken and just pull some of the fluff towards the tail just to make sure that it's got some. And we're going to do that with the face as well and just make sure that it's fluffed up and up that the fluff is getting into the corners. Okay, you guys, we're going to start on that top part of the chicken. It's actually called a comb of the chicken, that red part. I had to go look it up because I didn't really know what it was called, but the red part, you get me. So we're gonna start on that beginning third of the chicken. I do a, like a slip stitch or a single chain on that first one. And then I do a single crochet in that same chain space. This comb part of the chicken can really be whatever you want it to be. You can single crochet across, that's fine. Or you can, what I'm doing here is doing a couple increases of single crochet. And I'm also tucking that tail in as I go along. Because remember what I said, if you can skip a step and not have to go back and weave in your ends, do it. Um, and then after I do a couple of single crochet increases, I do a couple of half double crochet increases. And then after that, I do a couple of double crochet increases. 
And then I tail it back down to half double crochet and then like one single crochet on the end. This is not my favorite yarn. Of course, this was a scrap yarn and it has that sparkly stuff in it. And it's just really hard to like, it splits and the plastic stuff does what it wants to do. But it's scrap yarn and it does look cute with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue using it. Like I said, you don't really have to do just one increase. If you wanna make that comb a little more curly, you can do a third increase. So like do three single crochets in one chain or the half double crochet or three double crochets in one chain whatever you choose to it'll make that waddle a little more wavy and it just ends up looking more cute so whatever you decide you don't have to but increases in this space and this is what i like about the crochet closure for the chicken when you cl when i closed it the crochet closure just makes it a little easier to get your crochet hook in there now that very end can be a little tricky, but you just get in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to your best to get your crochet hook into one of those stitches. Um, it's gonna look cute either way. And then this is where I would probably do like a half double crochet and a single crochet after I've done my increases of my double crochets once I get to the end. Um, cause then I'll do that one chain and just close it off. All right. So this is where we cut off our yarn. We close off our stitches. Our chicken is looking so cute. Um, we're going to put our yarn on a darning needle. We're just going to weave that end in. This is how I weave that last little bit in uh, to the waddle. Now this part is totally optional, but this is where you're gonna use the fabric fusion. This is how I do it to kind of weave in the end to make it kind of stay and make it a little neater. So here you can see I'm pulling that yarn just a little bit. I'm adding just a little bit of a drop and putting it along the yarn. And then I'm going to snip the yarn and just kind of tug that yarn in and pull it through so it's hidden in the stitches. So this is where I add the button. Now you don't have to add the button, but I like the button because it makes the chicken stand upright. Uh, you're gonna need that smaller darning needle and you're going to get some of your scrap yarn from when you cinched that chicken shut. And I like to go through about four or five stitches that are in between the tail and that comb part of the chicken. So I like to make sure that there's an even amount of yarn on each side. It doesn't have to be completely exact, but enough to pull through the middle of the chicken. So I'm gonna take our darning needle and we're gonna go through the chicken 
and we're gonna go just to the left side of that cinched closure and pull the darning needle through. So from here, we're gonna put our button through the yarn. We want to go through the bottom to the top and then from the top through the bottom. And then we're gonna take our darning needle off the yarn and we're gonna leave the button as it is. We're not gonna like attach it yet. Now we're gonna go back to the top of the chicken to where the, our remaining scrap yarn is. Thread our darning needle and do the same thing and thread the yarn through the chicken to the opposite side of that cinched bottom of the chicken. You don't want to take the yarn off the darning needle you want to go through the button but you're going to go the opposite direction so you're going to go through the bottom up and then you're going to go down the top part the opposite direction the other yarns coming out of i don't know if that makes any sense but hopefully you get it um, that way the ends of the yarn are on opposite sides of the button and you can pull so from here is where you're going to decide how tall or chunky you want your chicken. So you can pull it from the top to make it taller or you can cinch it a little bit or pull it closed from the working yarn where the button is at to make it a little shorter and a little more chunky. I like mine a little more chunky, but it makes that tail stick out a little bit more, it makes that comb a little bit more. Um, defined and I, I like it a little chunky so once you decide on the size of your chicken you just take those two pieces of yarn at the end and you just give it a couple knots there tie it shut um, I'd like to do it at least two or three times You can just tuck that yarn in or cut the extra like I am. Um, just leave a little bit so that way you can tuck it in. I just take my crochet hook and I pull the rest of that little bit of uh, working yarn on the inside. That's it. There you are. Your chicken is all done. I like the button on the bottom. I like how it just sits perfectly. It's not like tumbling over. And it's just so freaking cute. I'm obsessed with making these chickens. If you end up making one of these chickens, go ahead and tag me in one of my socials. I'll see you guys soon. Maybe for another video. Hey. Thank you.